Hey everyone, this is Mike, and I'm here to do another in my, well, which I think may turn out to be a series of experiences of seeing films on the big screen. And this, this is a film that is not an old classic, but it is 10 years old, and it's a film that I had never seen before. About a week ago, I went to see There Will Be Blood, directed by uh, Paul Thomas Anderson and um, starring Daniel Day-Lewis and Paul Dino. Now, the, the, the uh, Virginia Theater here in Champaign was doing a, a, a limited retrospective of, I think, three films directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. They were going to show Magnolia, which I have seen before and I wanted to go see again, and they ended up canceling that for some reason. And there was another film, I think it was Punch Drunk Love, which I, I have not seen also, and I missed that one. But I decided to go see There Will Be Blood, which is a film I, I don't own, have nothing to show you here, except some notes that I wrote down on this piece of paper. And uh, I, I think when There Will Be Blood came out, I, I think I can't remember hearing that much about it, but I'm sure that I avoided it mainly because the title suggested that it was going to be a bloody mess, and I don't like screen violence that much, so I just thought, eh, I, I won't go see this. So I decided, uh, what was it, about a week and a half ago to give this movie a chance since I had nothing else to do. And I'm very glad that I went. I, I will say that the the promise of the title, that there would be blood, did come true. <laughs> you had to wait a couple of hours to uh, to get to the blood. But once once it came, it just flowed like, well, blood. Yeah. So, But it wasn't really a violent film. It had some violence and a lot of physical altercations uh, going on inside the movie, but no, it really wasn't a terribly violent film. So my impressions of this, it was it was fascinating from start to finish. And it seems to me that more than anything else, it was, it was a long character study of this very, very complicated man played by Daniel Day-Lewis. The man's name is Daniel Plainview, who in the late 19th century is a gold prospector in New Mexico, makes a little bit of money, uh, early in the 20th century, he discovers oil in California and starts building a business. And at some point, he is approached by this man named Paul uh, Sunday, Paul Sunday, played by Paul Dano, who says that his family's property in in the middle of nowhere in California, um, he, he's pretty sure that there is an oil oil deposit under his father's property. And he says you can probably pick it up for a very low amount of money. So Daniel goes to this place and he offers, he finds the oil, wants to drill, so he has to buy the property. He, he tries to buy the property very cheaply from these people. But Paul Sunday has a twin brother named Eli, who happens to be a preacher. He's starting up his own church. And he can see right through what Daniel is trying to do, and he demands $10,000. Well, Daniel agrees. So they, they start drilling for oil. Um, they build up this sort of a, a village around the oil area out in the middle of just rocky ground. And so th that begins this very long conflict between Daniel and Eli, which goes on for, I mean, it, it's very complicated. Two very, very complicated people, two very complicated men in their own ways, and uh, ends up very badly for one of them. So I, I'm sure everybody within the sound of my voice has already seen this movie, so there's no reason to talk about the plot or anything like that any further, because I know that you, probably a lot of the people that I'm associated with on YouTube will be very big fans of this movie, and I am now as well. Although I have to admit, I doubt that I would ever want to see this again, but again, never say never. I don't think I will buy it, but I, I don't know, maybe I will. If I came, if I'd come across a very uh, inexpensive copy, I, I might consider buying it, but fascinating to look at. And it was nominated for eight Academy Awards. It won for uh, Best Actor, Daniel Day-Lewis, who gives a great performance. And, and I don't know why he did this, but with his voice, he was channeling John Huston. If you've ever heard John Huston, the director who was also sometimes an actor, speak, you would know that Daniel Day-Lewis was doing uh, an imitation of John Huston. I'm not sure why exactly that happened, but it was it was interesting anyway. So, yeah, eight Academy Award nominations, including uh, Best Cinematography, which I, I could say, yeah, that, that was that was warranted. Although, like I said, there isn't a lot of beauty to look at here. It's mainly just uh, a lot of um, darkness and ugliness, but it, it works. 
It works very effective. So I'm glad I got to see it on the big screen. The Virginia Theater has a wide screen and uh, this, this filled the entire screen. So it was very exciting, very exciting movie. Now, Paul Dano was an interesting actor as well. I, I would think that he would be very hard to cast because he he's now in his early 30s and he still has this baby face that uh, I would think he would be very, very hard to cast. But he is certainly a unique actor, certainly one of a kind. And I, I would think that he would be doing some great things. But in this film, I mean, he matched Daniel Day-Lewis perfectly. They were, uh, they were right there together. I can imagine what it was like for the two of them having to... Uh, be that physical with each other. I don't know. I just I can't imagine that somebody didn't get hurt while they were doing this. I don't know. Uh, another another character in the film is played by Kevin J. O'Connor, playing a character named Henry who who comes to visit. Well, he comes to meet Daniel Plainview because he says that he is his long lost long lost half brother, and he has in his possession a diary that uh, he he said he's been keeping has some family pictures, a lot of information. Well, Daniel takes this guy at his word that he is his long lost brother and he seems to be getting a little close to him but then he becomes very suspicious so another another character study although in a, in a supporting role very well done by kevin j o'connor there's also the the uh, added bit of interest in the film where early in his his career as an oil man when um one of his co-workers or I should say employees is killed this man actually had a small a small son a, ba a baby boy who he had with him while they were while they were working and uh, so Daniel just takes the boy into his life and I don't know if he actually adopts him I don't, I don't think he does but he tells everybody that this kid is actually his son and that the mother died during childbirth and, and he wants to use the kid as as sort of a, a, a way to get sympathy from people because if they see him as a family man and if he tells everybody well I'm taking care of my, my son his mother died in childbirth and they might be more likely to to uh, want to do business with him so that also ends up very badly but uh, so I, I guess that's really all I want to say my friend uh, Cineram when I wrote on Facebook that I, I had seen this film he said please do a video so anyway this is kind of for you Scott I hope you like this I don't, I don't feel like I can give a, a detailed analysis of the film, but these are just my own personal impressions. There will be blood. Yes, there certainly was. And I'm very happy that I saw it. And Paul Thomas Anderson, let's see. I haven't seen, I've, I've seen Boogie Nights. I've seen Magnolia and uh, Inherent Vice. So those are my only experiences with this guy, but I would like to see more of his work. So anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about There Will Be Blood. Good night.